continue blessing the Lord in the life that he has given us. Continue worshipping him with all that we have and all that we are. We want to bring everyone who has asked us to pray for them in this mercy. We also want to bring all our Christians those of this parish and all other parishes that follow us, those who come here every morning, afternoon and evening, those who accord with us all over the world, and especially as we continue praying for the end of the pandemic, let us adore the Lord, bow to him in humility, and he will listen to us, for he is not <coughs> deaf, he is not dumb or blind, and to our pleas he listens. We also pray with the family of Father DiCaro, as we pray also for the soul of his mother Teresia, that God, they may find consolation in the Lord and the Lord, and that the Lord may grant us here, our mother, rest and peace in Him. You have redeemed us, O Lord, by your blood. O God, when you went forth before your people, marching with them and living among them, the earth trembled, heavens poured down rain. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We are sinners in need of God's mercy. But his fathomless mercy is always with us like a notion that is bottomless. Let us then trust in this love and mercy of God. Seek it while we, he is still around and ask him to forgive us. Make us worthy of the sacred mysteries before us. I confess to Almighty God, and you, my brothers and sisters, that have greatest sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I've done and in what I've failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask for a very version of the angels and saints. And you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May the Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O oh God, who made your people partakers in your redemption, grant we pray that we may perpetually render thanks for the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days, Paul left Aden and went to Corinth, and he found a Jew called Aquila, a native of Portus, lately come from Italy with his wife Priscilla. 
because Claudius had commanded all the Jews to leave Rome. And he went to see them. And because he was of the same trade, he stayed with them. And they worked, for they trade them for by trade they made tent makers. They were tent makers. And he argued in the synagogue every Sabbath and persuaded Jews and Greeks. When Silas and Timothy arrived from Macedonia, Paul was occupied with preaching and testifying to the Jews that the Christ was Jesus. And when they opposed and revered him, he took out his garment and said to them, Your blood be upon your heads. I am innocent. For now on, I will go to Gentiles. For, and he left there, and went to the house of a man called Titus Justus, a worshiper of God. His house was next door to the synagogue. Crispus, the ruler of the synagogue, believed in the Lord, together with all his household. And many of the Corinthians, hearing Paul, believed and were baptized. The word of the Lord. Responsorial Psalm. The response. The Lord has shown his deliverance to the nations. O oh, sing a new song to the Lord, for he has worked wonders. His right hand and his holy arm has brought salvation. The Lord has shown his deliverance to the nations. The Lord has made known his salvation, has shown his deliverance to the nations. He has remembered his merciful love and his truth for the house of Israel. The Lord has shown his deliverance to the nations. All the ends of the earth has seen the salvation of the Lord. Shout to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth into joyful song and sing out your praises. The Lord has shown his deliverance to the nations. A gospel acclamation. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I will not leave you orphans, says the Lord. I will make back to you. I will come back to you, and your heart will rejoice. Hallelujah. You will be sorrowful, but your sorrows will turn into joy. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. John chapter 16. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, A little while, and you will see me no more. Again, a little while, and you will see me. Some of his disciples said to one another, What is this that he, he, he says to us? A little while, and you will not see me. And again, a little while, and you will see me. And because I go to the Father, they said, What does he mean by a little while? We do not know what he means. Jesus knew that they wanted to ask him, so he said to them, Is this what you are asking yourselves? What I meant by saying, A little while, and you not see me. And again, a little while, and you will see me. Truly, truly, I say to you, you will weep and lament, but the world will rejoice. You will be sorrowful, but your sorrow will turn into joy. The Gospel of the Lord. God is good, and all the time. You may have been told one time or 
Maybe many times you've heard other people tell others, we will hear you tomorrow. I'll hear you tomorrow. And in the famous Kikuyu translation, they will always tell you when they don't need you or when you have really bored them. That we might have heard, but probably many did not know that that is a rendering from what Paul was taught in Athens when he had tried to preach the resurrection. Everything else, every other wisdom, they came with him and they did not have any problem with him. But when he started talking about the resurrection of Jesus and also the resurrection from the dead, let us hear you tomorrow. The mission was very unsuccessful in Athens. And today's first reading starts from there. He moves from Athens, from the unsuccessful mission field to another mission field, and this is Corinth. Where we shall, know, we shall see, as we already know, that the mission was very successful. And here he meets some Jews, Priscilla or Prisca, with her husband Aquila. And in this also we know what Paul was doing between Friday and the Sabbath, between Friday and the weekend. Between, rather, between Monday and the weekend. And that was, he was a tent maker. He would make tents for sale and that's how he also earned his living and that's how he also funded his mission, missionary journeys. Although we know, of course, that later he will depend so much on the donations that he got from the Church of Philippi. Well, all that said, we know that Paul is continuing with his mission very fervently and very uh, diligently. And today's speech of Paul is summarized in only a few words. Jesus is the Christ. Jesus is the Messiah, is the Messiah, is the Anointed One. And that wins also a lot of people, as we have seen, after he has talked so much about the promises and then brings them to Christ, many are also ready to embrace that. Remember, these people with whom he has met, that I mentioned already, Aquila and Prisca, have been thrown out of Rome because they were already starting some star, if you want. The Christianity that was now growing there had already started raising some star because it is discomforting those who are already in their years old or centuries old religions of other deities. And in order to be consistent with what the Romans thought about the Roman peace, what is normally called the Pax Romana, they would not be allowed to continue there. And therefore, by an edict of Claudius, uh, the Emperor Claudius, they were thrown out. But then, as we said before, the blood of the martyrs, the persecution of Christians, has always become, as our fathers have told us, 
the seed of faith, the seed of the church. And they are spreading in other places and we can be sure that that's why the message was received so quickly because there were already Christians in Corinth. Coming to the gospel, Jesus is talking in ones not very familiar even to his disciples. He's living, but he's saying for a little while I'll be away and for a little while you see me no more, but then for a little while you will see me. Of course, it's confusing. The disciples are still in denial. They are not allowing Jesus' departure. Of course, nobody loves goodbyes. Although we say them and we gladly say goodbye to people, we also don't accept them so easily. And even those who say goodbye to us always have some sorrow in them because it is not easy to leave people that you love and especially for a long time and if you are to go to a distant place or you know going to see them for a good while. But Jesus knows that despite the disciples' sorrow, what is just going to happen is for their good and he has told them as much. Because he wants now to live in them in a different manner, in a different nature, where he can possess their hearts and possess their lives, walk in them and through them, also work wonders and do great to the whole world, to be able to be passed to the whole world through the Spirit. But even that, when they hear of his departure, the disciples are only thinking about the imminent death. And therefore, they are sorrowful. He is leaving us. But Jesus assures them that even if he is going, he is still to come back. First, in a little while, like in three days after death he is coming to be with them they will see him and when the world is rejoicing at the, their victory when the ruler of this world is rejoicing at the apparent victory in the death of Jesus Christ when the world is laughing at the disciples when they are in sorrow because they have lost the one they hoped for. Jesus is telling them that is the moment of joy for that is the moment of your glorification. That is, that is the most of you that, that's the time of your edification and you are going now to be built into temples that you've never known before because the spirit is going to inhabit your lives the Spirit is going to make you his own dwelling places, so to say, because the Spirit of Jesus Christ himself is the one now to live in them. And of course this sorrow will continue later again, after he has left us. Remember today, in the normal calendar of the church would be the ascension, and therefore it is about also living but then after he lives again because of the ascension, it is not the end. In fact, life now begins at that particular time that is thought to be lost. Just like resurrection dawns at death, just like Life is born of death and the resurrection. So also, the joy of the apostles will be born out of the sorrow that they experience at death and also at his ascension. 
But the tension remains during the time of the church. And this is the time you are talking about. Between the ascension and his coming back in the second coming. And the, and the resurrection of the dead. And the, and the eschaton of the whole world. So at that time also, during the time of the church, there is sorrow, there is anticipation, there is every kind of anxiety because we do not know where we are and when is this or that. But the Lord assures us that we shall find joy even in that sorrow because just like death bore life and his own Pasco, uh, Pasco, uh, his own Pasch, that is during his suffering, death and resurrection, death gave way to life. So also, this sorrow that you have, you also give birth to joy. And it will not just be a short term joy, but in the end, it will be an everlasting joy. One a Martin Buber asked, does God need us? That we need God is very clear. But that does God need us? And then he answers, through he does. Because in him, first of all, in us, first of all, God, you may be made manifest. His glory does not shine to all other creatures and even to those people who deny or who hate him, except through those that he has created and those that he has made to know him. In other words, when we ourselves are continuing in our life fully as we should, when we ourselves are continuing to give witness through our mouths, through our lips, through our tongues, through our words, or even through right living God is made manifest he is glorified in what we are and what we say what we think or even what we live because he has made us of course in his own image and likeness so that whenever the world sees us and wherever we are we can always manifest that God who is there God needs us to glorify him and in the works also of these apostles and all of us who will come after the apostles, God, who has revealed himself in Jesus Christ, will continue being revealed to the whole world and thus be glorified because of us, because of what we do and what we say. And therefore, we should not be anxious but have the joy and the hope that has been put in us. For when it manifests to the world, the whole world also is glorified with Jesus and also with us. We praise the Lord. Pray, dear brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice here may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings, so that purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love. Through Christ Jesus, our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God.
It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, for sun are in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, for sun are in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of your Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the church, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Those things in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world. For by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. <clears throat> May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with the elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence 
we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis Oapo, John Cardinal Jue, and David Kamoa bishops, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayer, prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O oh, Master Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the ages. Remember your servant, Teresia Adikaro, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she, who was united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth we raise up and refresh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body, to our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who are present to you as they are passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom, there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes, for seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall like you for all ages and praise you without end. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. We are called the children of God, and that is what we are indeed. Therefore now we dare to say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord, deliver us, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who say to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your holy will. You who live and reign forever and ever. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you now and always. Let us now promise one another the peace of Christ. Peace. 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 Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us your peace.
Look here. This is Jesus, the resurrected Lord. This is the Lamb of God who's taken away all our sins. Blessed are those caught to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter my roof, but only say a word, and my soul shall be healed. In the body and blood of Jesus Christ, save and protect us till we come to a return of home with him. Behold, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Paschal sacrament, and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food. Christ Jesus our Lord. We pray with the Pope and the whole church for the end of COVID-19. May O oh Mary, you shine continuously on our journey as a sign of salvation and hope. We entrust ourselves to you, help of the sea. At the foot of the cross, you participated in Jesus' pain, in steadfast pain. You salvation of all the people who know what we need. We are certain that you will provide, so that as you did at Cana of Galilee, Joy and feasting might return after this moment of trial. Help us, Mother of Divine Love, to conform ourselves to the Father's will and to do what Jesus tells us. He who took our sufferings upon himself and bore our souls to bring us through the cross the joy of the resurrection. Amen. We seek refuge and your protection, Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our pleas, we who are put to the test, and deliver us from every danger of glorious and blessed virgin. The Lord be with you. May the Almighty God now bless and protect you all in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Go forth in the peace of Christ to love and serve him in one another. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.